Welcome to TMT Predictions focused on technology. My name is Eric Openshaw. I'm the Global Technology Leader for Deloitte. And I'm joined today by my two esteemed colleagues, Duncan Stewart from Canada and Paul Lee from the UK. Gentlemen, thanks for being here today. Pleasure to be here. Let's Good to be here. Great. Let's jump right in. We have a theme running through predictions this year around the proliferation of devices. And I think that that represents a number of interesting challenges, and I'd like you to talk about that for a few minutes. First, let's talk about security. Security is an interesting challenge because in the past, IT departments have gotten very used to the idea that there tended to be one standard computer-like device, maybe one standard smartphone. Now in this new world, when there are many different smartphones being supported at many firms, uh, many tablets coming into the market, we have different form factors, we have different operating systems, we have different security patches and fixes, and the challenge is going to be is, is this new world less secure than the old one? Paul? Yeah. And certainly when you look at you know, what motivates, for example, uh, somebody who makes a virus on a professional basis, and what tends to be the case is that they will focus on whatever the biggest market is. And as you get a diversification, for example, of uh, operating systems, um, it's no longer so obvious as to which one you focus on. So in some respects, you could see um, like a lessening of, of the impact of, of viruses. Yeah, any, any virus that's introduced is not going to be able to address 100% of the computing devices out there, almost by definition. Mm -hmm. well, this is a fascinating uh, area then, because my next question was going to be directly uh, focused on the cost to the developer in this multiple device platform environment. How does the developer come out if they're continuing to have to write things for all different kinds of platform activities? It sounds like it has the same issue for the hacker. Uh, it, it, it's the same thing. You, you, you can't hit any one of the market with any one program, and that's a good thing if hackers can't do that. But for a device developer, if you're developing an app, let's call it an app, it's software. If I'm writing an app, there's a broad estimate in the range. It depends how big the app's going to be, but I hear anywhere from $5,000 an app to $500,000 an app. So let's, let's keep that range and say 50-ish. If I'm a developer, a small developer, and I want to write to every kind of smartphone and every kind of tablet and every kind of conventional computer, my development cost could be in the millions of dollars. So what we're going to see is people are going to have to pick and choose. What's the natural market? And, and they're going to have to figure out what maybe are my top one, two, or three, and they're going to need to focus on those. Yeah. And one of the trends we're seeing is, uh, you know, it's not about just making apps to sell. It's also making um, apps which are being used for marketing purposes. So it's not about finding lots and lots of clients, maybe just find, finding that one client which wants you to put that app in the market to raise their profile to improve their, their brand standing. So th there's different ways of approaching the um, uh, approach to just generating revenue. And then I suppose that will determine which platforms they will then build for. And already we're seeing that um, it's, say, the top three OSs which are being built for, and everything else um, just gets dropped because the market is too small. This must be having an impact on the CIO and his or, or her organization to, to keep up with all the different devices. Well, that's one going to be a real growth market is uh, coming in and holding the hand of the CIO, I think, because of the cost of this almost by definition has to be higher. There are some virtues in some of these new operating systems and some of these new devices. Uh, one example I'm very fond of is a common vector for viruses is uh, contaminated USB keys. And uh, many of these tablets, many of these smartphones, you can't even put a USB key in. So that obviously solves that problem. But on the other hand, supporting multiple devices is almost inevitably going to raise the total cost of ownership. If I've got a, an IT department, are they going to need to be expert at four, six, ten different systems? Are they going to provide support? When, when new updates come out, are they all going to be able to be processed on the same three or four hour period? And that, that seems virtually impossible. Yeah, and some of the approaches that we're seeing with CIOs which are facing this issue, and it, we'll expect we'll get um, more of an issue um, you know, as a year goes by, is they're saying to groups of users who want a new platform, a new device, they're saying, well, if you want to have that, you support yourselves initially. We cannot provide the kind of support we had when we had a standardized platform. Um, and what they're finding is that it's working initially. Um, when it rolls out to the entire uh, firm with, with that approach, it may not work so robustly, but certainly with early adopters, they're happy supporting each other. Over the years, our predictions has had a lot of focus on this device and migration of the device. Is there a future perfect form factor coming? Is, are we headed to one form factor? Um, whenever we survey people, we ask them, you know, how many devices would you like to have? The answer is always one. And when we ask them, how many devices do you have compared to two years ago? The answer is almost always 
more. So I think what we'd expect to see is uh, we will not have a perfect, say, like Swiss Army knife equivalent of a digital form factor. We all have multiple form factors which are specialized uh, to what we're doing. So we'll be surrounded by computing devices of different forms, functions, and specialization. And I think overall, um, it will improve um, our enjoyment, our productivity. One of the analogies I'm very fond of is, is thinking of, of computing devices as an awful lot like cars rather than bicycles. Bicycles, by and large, look the same. Some occasionally they have three wheels, most of the time not. Aside from that, there's a wheel in front, a wheel in back. You know, they, they tend to be very, very similar to each other. They're serving a very basic need. When we look at the automotive market, we've got pickup trucks and SUVs and little two-seater sports cars. There's a much greater diversity uh, of needs, of use cases, of price points, and we think that the computer market's going to resemble that. Uh, people are going to want an awful lot of different things out of their computing devices. Sometimes it's portability, sometimes it's power, sometimes it's a mixture of the two. Very good. Well, power is a big deal too, isn't it? And we've been watching over the years uh, numerous different technologies come and go with respect to power. It seems to be the holy grail of pushing the technology envelope forward. Battery technology in particular hasn't moved as quickly as we would have hoped over the last really 150 years. Curious, is this really the stumbling block to the, the future success of devices? Could I just lead with a confession? Um, a few years back, we uh, tried to predict the future of battery technology, and we looked at, at uh, ethanol as a replacement for uh, lithium. And we were quite resoundingly wrong on that respect. And also, we also looked to um, other forms of absorbing uh, energy from our surroundings, you know, be it kinetic energy or, or movement. And again, we were largely wrong in that respect. So in terms of what we're going to be talking about for this year, I'll we're, we're, it's impossible to say that, that, that nobody will come up with some kind of breakthrough technology last week, next week, next year. But there's two important things. One, battery technology, when we stick to the same fundamental chemistry as currently we are doing with lithium, although there are different substances you can pair with lithium, although there are different electrolytes you can use, by and large, the rate of progress tends to be relatively slow. Unlike Moore's Law, which progresses at 50, 60, 80 percent per year, uh, battery technology is two, three, four, five percent per year. So it will get better over time, but it doesn't get better in quantum leaps. So it's fairly important to kind of keep in mind that as much as we may think of batteries as the holy grail, they are going to improve at a relatively steady pace for the foreseeable future. Now, if somebody does invent a, a Nobel Prize winning new energy storage device, even that takes probably about 10 years to get to market. Uh, you've got to test it, you've got to make sure it's safe, you've got to integrate it in a system, you've got to see how reliable it is and how it works through charge recharge cycles. So it is a long and slow process, even if somebody comes up with something great next year. So what are the other levers? Well, uh, one of the levers that is available is um, around the way in which you store. Um, so if you move into solid state uh, memory, then that has less of an impact on the need to uh, draw off the energy. So the big level seems to be um, just using energy a lot more efficiently, so sipping rather than gulping at that energy store. I mean, when you think about it, the fact that batteries don't improve at Moore's Law, it actually tells you where to look for the lever. Go look at things that do. So solid state drives, those are, those are improving at the rate of Moore's Law and look like they will continue to do so. Or use more power sensitive processors inside these that once again use perhaps um, one or two watts rather than five or six or seven watts. So if you uh, have to work inside a constrained battery window, go out there and, and don't focus on the battery, maybe focus on the, the bits of silicon that actually are improving at the exponential rate. Thank you, gentlemen. You've been very gracious with your time this morning. Very enjoyable discussion. I look forward to sitting with you next year to see how we did with these predictions and where we go from there. Thank you, Eric. Pleasure.